Ladies and gentlemen, Raila Amolo Odinga today suffered a major political blow after nine members of parliament from Nyanza region dumped him and joined William Samoy Arapruto. That move by the nine members of parliament is actually significant politically speaking because it's coming at a time when number one, Raila Odinga just announced the other day that he's not going to recognize William Ruto's presidency. Now the nine members of parliament are actually confirming that Ruto is the president of the Republic of Kenya. Number two, it is also coming at a time when Raila Odinga had embarked on a series of political rallies across the country. So in this video, I want us to look at the move by the nine members of parliament to join William Samoy Arab Ruto and the political significance. And just like I keep on saying, in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Everything is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objectives. I want us to look into the objectives of these nine members of parliament. Before we do that, in case you are watching the, the, this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thank you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Now, let us now get straight huh, to the issues. For those who follow this channel, I've always opined that in politics, there are only two interests, two constants. The first constant in politics is normally the interest. As long as the interest of politicians can actually converge, they'll always work together. And the other constant thing in politics is normally betrayal. That's why you always find these politicians working today, tomorrow they are not working together. And I want to demonstrate to you guys using this. In, uh, in, the, in the photo you are seeing there, that was in uh, January 2015, you can see me there seated with Eli Udowalo and Raila Amurodinga. During that particular time, Eli Udowalo was a very close ally and associate of Raila Amurodinga. He actually was the chief strategist for Raila Odinga. On this particular day, I remember so well, we were at Serena. At that time, I was also leading online campaigns for Raila Odinga because Raila Odinga had actually lost the elections. Everybody had dumped him. So we were the people who had come up with uh, what we were calling Raila Odinga's defense force. So I was actually the lead. So on this day, we were at Serena. And you are Serena, and Raila Molodinga gave me, Raila Ndawalo gave me a list of members of parliament who were, betrayed, who were betraying him at that particular time. I remember some of those members of parliament were very good friends of mine. The list included uh, Agostino Neto, who was a very good friend of mine, by the way, up to now. Then there was Kinobura, who was also a good friend of mine. There was Silvanus Osol Osele, who was a friend. Then there was David Uchien. In that list, that list had uh, Mele Odiambo, and that list also had George O'Neill, and the last person on that list was actually Ken Okoth. Raila Odinga had to be that list, and he told me, together with the Wallo, these are the people who are giving him problems, and uh, we are intending to start campaigning against them. And as fate would have it, almost all those people lost their seats, apart from Mele Odiambo. Mele Odiambo made tactical retreat very fast, and of course, you know, David Ching later made a comeback. I'm just giving you that story because on this particular day, it was Eli Dowalo who was plotting how to destroy those members of parliament from going to Ruto. Today, Eli Dowalo was actually with the Ruto <laughs> receiving members of parliament from ODM. So, which means in politics, it's just a matter of interest but that's not the story for today for today let us look at um, the objective uh, of this meeting and why it's significant why do you think ruto met these people at this particular time this is what status posted because i want us to look what status posted then what Raila Odinga posted then i want to give you my thoughts and i want you to pay very close attention with what status is saying President hold consultative meetings with ODM MPs. Huh? President William Ruto and the Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa today, I mean Tuesday, held a meeting with a section of MPs from Nyanza as a follow-up to his recent tour of the region. The leaders explored a mechanism of working together 
to address national and county issues. The MPs allied to the ODM party pledged their support to President Ruto. I want you to note that up to that stage, the ODM party has been mentioned twice at the heading and down here, and it's, it's emphasizing the MPs allied to the ODM party pledged their support to Ruto. They were good, you know, Chanda Bondo, Elisho Diampo Game, Mark Nyamita Uriri, Karolio Mondi Suba South, Shakil Shabir Kisumu East Independent, Felix Odurja Lango, Langata, Polabur Rongo, John Owen is not John Owen, it's uh, <laughs> the MP for, for, <laughs> for Awen is not, uh, <laughs> it's not uh, John Owen. Then there's Kisumu Senator Tom Ojianda. The president said the government would serve all Kenyans equally. Elections are over. We don't want to polarize the country. We will work for all Kenyans. Ruto said he will work with the leaders from across the political divide for the sake of the country's unity and economic transformation. The legislators thanked the president for his visit to Nyanza and said their constituents are interested in uh, service delivery. Basically, William Ruto had a uh, handshake with these people and it's not for the handshake. But that's not important. Let me get for you the response from the ODM party, which in my view is also significant. Then I want to take you to what you are not being told about this meeting. Now, this is what ODM party posted. When you go to their website, this is what ODM party posted. <clears throat> visit to State House by a section of ODM party members. The visit to State House this morning by a section of ODM members of Parliament has not come as a surprise to the party and Azimio Laumoja One Kenya movement. The party has been monitoring closely the behind-the-scenes activity involving some of them and today was just a climax, which means the ODM party is not surprised by the turn of event. In fact, someone was telling me that Elisho Diambo has been working with, with the Ruto very closely on... Uh, his visit to, <clears throat> to game. And it's continuing. Since the victory of our party leader, Honorable Relo Dinga, was stolen, and the will of the people subverted after the August 9th general election, some leaders have elected to undermine the leadership of the party and chosen to go against the will of the people who elected them to the positions they hold. Now, if you read that paragraph clearly, it's hard-hitting. Basically, ODM is dissociating itself from these members. And this, the action by the members of parliament to, to visit Ruto, according to ODM party, is actually undermining the party leadership. Why? Because ODM is saying Ruto is not the president. But they are meeting William Ruto ah, in his capacity as the president. And it continues. Three months ago, the Azimila Moja leadership began rallies to push for the reclamation of its victory from the hands of illegitimate administration in order to provide the leadership Kenyans want. But... Along, we knew the enemy will not sit pretty. They have started spending stolen money to wing some of our leaders with the aim of trying to scuttle our activities. Such meetings are aimed at diverting the attention of Kenyans from issues that, from issues they face with, ranging from high cost of living and bearable school fees for children and corruption. We know that in the quest to, for legitimate leadership, there are those who will fall by the wayside and some will be compromised, but the movement remained unstoppable. This is the people's movement it are aimed at defending the constitution of the land. History will judge harshly leaders who want to betray Kenyans by accepting handouts to scuttle activities of the movement. Now, that statement by ODM party is actually hard-hitting. But let us look at the inner meaning, the objective of this particular meeting. For me, number one, the meeting is about the legitimacy of William Ruto's presidency. William Ruto is telling Raila Molodinga that I am the president of the Republic of Kenya. Your members of parliament are actually acknowledging that I am the president of the Republic of Kenya. If you read uh, the statement, I've, I've actually gone to most of the MPs and read their statement. They are saying, okay, they went to meet Ruto as a follow-up of their meeting in Kisumu, and, uh, and uh, that they are seeking for development. But William Ruto is not looking at it from that perspective. He's looking at his legitimacy. Because Raila Odinga told him, you did not win the presidency. And why is this, this being, how is this being done? 
look at the people who were present there. There is uh, there is uh, the Bondo member of parliament. That is the Bondo member of parliament is actually the hometown MP for Raila Odinga. Gideon Ochanda. So if your member of parliament is acknowledging that uh, I'm the president, then I don't bother what you do. So basically that's why Ruto held this meeting. And it was timed so well when the rallies had actually picked, the messaging was also picking up. Remember, the governors were allowed to meet with Ruto and to, to just discuss development projects. But Raila Odinga later on came and said, okay, that's not it. We are going to have <coughs> a new president. We're going to reclaim our victory. Ruto is not the president. So that's number one. Number two, <coughs> and this one is confirmed. The meeting was about mobilization for William Samoya Rap Ruto ahead of George Magoha's funeral. You know, George Magoha will be buried over the weekend. Uhuru Kenyatta will attend that funeral. I'm told he's planning to even attend a day two. Spend there up to the next day. Raila Odinga will be attending that event. William Ruto will be attending that event. So we are expecting high voltage politics during that particular event. And the truth of the matter is that it's likely going to be the first <coughs> encounter of these three individuals together after the last general election. And Raila Odinga will be telling his supporters that this guy stole my victory. And of course the, the event will be will be will be a presidential event. So the, the, the presidency will take over. They might even attempt to deny Raila Odinga a chance to speak at the event. So let us wait and see how everything is going to happen. But the truth is the idea of all this is to plan for that particular event, how William Ruto is going to be received. And that's why that's why Felix Sudur Jalango was dragged into this meeting. Because you can say William Ruto met members of parliament from Nyanza. Felix Oduori is not a member of parliament from Nyanza. He's a member of parliament in Nairobi. Yeah, so you ought to have waited, waited for Ruto to meet Nairobi in peace. But he was brought here. Why? Because he comes from game. And game is where the president will be, will be going. Then you talk of uh, Elisha, member of parliament from game. So William Ruto, in uh, my view, wanted to rope in the members of parliament from game in all this so as to help him mobilize ahead of that rally. What I don't know is the situation where my friend is actually going to find himself in. And by the way, of these people who met William Ruto, I sympathize so much with Felix Odwar Jalang because the nature of our politics is that our politics is tribal. And uh, I know the way ODM operates. Yeah, and you know, the other MPs are serving their two terms, apart from Karoli. And Karoli, for me, Raila will not bother about him. But Jalango, he might bother. And uh, winning a second term for Jalango, he can revenge himself, but I pity him because the others are serving their two, two terms. Even if they are not re-elected, they they'll be for home and dry. They'll be able to make money during this period working with government. Yeah, but the th truth is, it's all about mobilization, for Ruto ahead of Magoha's funeral. Number three, you know, parliamentary budget is supposed to be passed in parliament. Supplementary budget. And there's been debate about majority in parliament. Now, the truth of the matter is that William Ruto is keen on stamping his authority as the majority party in parliament. Now he's doing what is called artificial majority. He's creating artificial majority in parliament. So that it's going to be assumed that these nine members of parliament are definitely going to vote with the government of the day. If they won't, then they'll be asked. And of course, you know, so many others have left ODM and joined Ruto. And someone was telling me that when Ruto met with the members of parliament from the mountain, one thing he told them, the Jubilee MPs from the mountain, he told them that he wanted them to resign. So that they can occasion by election in the mountain. So that he can crash Uru again. And then those MPs will now be, not be Jubilee MPs in, in, in uh, essence. But now they'll be UDA members of parliament. So that you won't see ODM. I mean you won't see Jubilee 
UDA, you will always be seeing uh, UDA. Some of them have refused, but that was the reason. So basically, William Ruto is keen on creating artificial majority so that when the debates on this parliamentary, uh, supplementary budget will come, will be presented, it will be passed. And it will be passed easily. And number four, if you ask me, these meetings are actually meant to frustrate, to sabotage and thwart Ray Lodinga's rallies. You know, if you have nine members of parliament swearing to support Ruto, and Ray Lodinga is supposed to have another rally, what does it mean? On Sunday, Ray Lodinga will be in uh, Machakos. Then he will be in Machakos. You get me? Just get me. Ray Lodinga will be in Machakos. Then members from his Luanyanza met Ruto. What will stop members of parliament from Machakos County? Yeah, I'm just asking you. What do you think will stop members of parliament from Machakos to avoid attending that meeting? And instead of the, in, in the same day, on the same day, go and meet William Ruto. What do you think will stop them? I'm just asking. Maybe I could be wrong. Nothing. So basically, that's how these events are sabotaged. Rela will, is, well, well, assuming Rela will be going to Migori. In Migori, I saw the wrong members of member of parliament, Walter, or we know. No, wrong member of parliament uh, is not Walter. We know. We know is uh, is uh, Awendo. Paula Bur, wrong. Uriri Nyameta. So those are already three MPs. <laughs> and Israel Udinga is organizing a meeting in uh, Migori. Will they attend or will they not attend? Perceptionally, what will it, what message will they be sending? And lastly, if you ask me, this is now part of William Ruto's bold move to face off with Raila Amolodinga. Ruto is taking the political war to Raila Amolodinga. In fact, this is what Ruto did to Uhuru. He succeeded. In Nyanza, he failed because he, he tried it in 2013. And when 2017 election came, William Ruto tried it in Nyanza. He convinced my friends like Neto, Oner, uh, Kenobura, he convinced them that if they brought development through Jubilee, then people will vote for them. They'll use the money. But it, they failed. So after they failed in 2017, very few people are willing now to challenge ODM. In fact, majority of members of parliament from Nyanza were given direct ODM tickets because Raila Odinga wanted them to have that, the, the, the pension. Some of them would not have made it. Apart from one, I think there's only one member of parliament who didn't make it back. So Ruto is now taking the war to Raila in the hope that you can use this to fight Raila Odinga. The only problem he has is that Luos and Kikuyus are different. Luos will always defend Raila Odinga. They can disagree with him internally. But when it comes outside there, they will support him. That's why, at, uh, that's why immediately after elections, people are always bitter. They castigate him. When election comes, they rally around him. And by the way, I was shocked in the last election. There was this guy called Oda, Kisumu Central Member of Parliament, who contested on... Uh, independent and most people thought he was going to win i remember when i was lining up to vote here sports ground i saw his people people who were supporting him just changing their mind now that's the rules for you they'll always defend Raila Odinga. Yani those rules were like how can we vote for uh, an independent candidate to be a member of parliament for kisumu central the home turf of Raila Odinga. so they just changed their mind Inside they wanted order, but outside there was also the, the, the shadow of Raila Amolodinga. So Ruto is taking the water Raila Odinga's doorstep. Let us wait and see how it's going to end. I'll be keenly following, especially the statements these guys will be making. For uh, Elisha, we'll not wait far. Saturday is here with us. So let's wait for Saturday, see how Elisha will operate on that particular day. I don't know what you think that's my take. Thank you guys. May you have a good day. Bye-bye.